Exodus chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. This is his word given to us. You may be seated. Praise God. I uh, recently called my mom, and she's not been feeling very well lately. And uh, so I called to check on her to see how she was. And like all moms are, I call to see how she is, and she immediately turns the conversation around to how I am. So, I, and I, I said, Mom, I called to check on you. No, Tommy. No, I need to know how you are, how you're doing. And so I recently uh, began to start some continuing education courses to Nazarene Bible College. So actually it was pretty late here at the church when I got done that I called her. And I said, well, Mom, I'm doing, a, right now I'm in an orientation class, uh, preparing to take these, this course of study that I'm going to be doing. And I said, uh, this is, it, it's pretty much primarily all about computers and software. You have to learn how to do their software. No more pencil and paper. You have to know their software. Well, now, I got to tell you, there's a significance to this and me saying this to my mom because my mom, um, well, she has a flip phone. And even that, her and the flip phone don't get along too well. So she doesn't do well with computers, cell phones. Now, what I'm saying, cell phone is a smartphone. So it, at one time, she had a computer. She still has it, but she can't. It just doesn't work for her. I don't know what's wrong with that silly computer. It just won't work for her. So I thought, you know, I had this idea one time that I was going to say, well, my mom, how about if we set you up with a smartphone? Well, we've sort of dismissed that. Okay, so she has her flip phone and she has trouble even with that. You never know when you're going to call her if she's going to answer because that silly thing just doesn't work right for her. So I, today, have you noticed how... You can't do anything without a cell phone. You can't do your banking. You can't, what? You, it's like to the point anymore, almost you can't do anything without a computer, a cell phone, an iPad. You know, it wasn't that long ago that it was like that. Remember? And what's nice now, too, is that, so let's say that you're, you're set up with your bank and you got your online checking going and you've got your app on your phone and you're all set to go and you begin to learn how it works and you're starting to feel proud of yourself and you're starting to feel confident and then, okay. yes, did you hear that out there? Do you hear? They change it. Because they've come up with the latest and greatest update. Amen. But they're the only ones that are excited about it. You're not, the only thing you're excited about is the fact is, is that they changed it again. And you just 
got it all together and you were proud of yourself and you knew how to work it and they changed it. And so you get in there and it doesn't work right. And you got to call the bank and you got to go through all this. But it wasn't that long ago, was it? How powerful a pencil and a piece of paper used to be. <laughs> so as I was talking with my mom and I'm trying to explain to her about this class and so anyway, we kind of moved on from there. But what I came to realize as I'm talking to my mom, we, we're actually what we're talking about is we're talking about change. And so what I've never realized in my life as we're having this conversation that night that my mom saw D-Day in World War II. Now think about, as we talk about that we can remember in our lives how things have changed just with the computers and the cell phones and that kind of thing. As I began to talk to my mom, I began to realize how much things have changed for her. Now we look back at that time as a, as a moment in history but for my mother, that's a part of her life. She remembers that day. She remembers hearing about that day. She remembers our troops landing on the beach. She remembers Hitler and Stalin and Europe and Japan and all that happened during that time. Now, how life has changed, and not just changed in, in, in that, but how much our, our culture has changed, how much things have changed for us in our lives that are actually pivotal, pi pivotal, pivotal, I still can't say it, <laughs> pivotal upon that time. So as we continue to talk, then we talked about the man on the moon. Now, not the man on the moon like in the old movies. We landed on the moon. And I was thinking while my mom was talking about that and how important that was to her, that she remembers that and that time. And I'm thinking as I'm talking to her on the smartphone that has an immense amount of of processing power and memory power that goes way beyond the computer that they had on the lander. But do you remember, for those of you who can remember, <laughs> I remember that. I remember that day when we landed on the moon. And how for me, too, what a marvel. They have an onboard computer on their lander? Wow! And now, every couple years, we get a new cell phone. No big deal. Well, it kind of is, isn't it? Because then you got to learn it all over again, right? Because they've changed everything up, the latest and the greatest. So there's something that I do really, you know something I really enjoy about cell phones that I think is just terrific. And that, if, if you happen to read the Friday Focus, I actually talked about this. And that is, is now that I can, I can take my cell phone and I can speak into it and I can tell it where I want to go. And it comes right up, it processes that, comes right up. I push the start button and I sit it down on the console and it tells me exactly where I need to go. So a couple weeks ago, uh, I had a wedding ceremony to perform. And so this wedding ceremony was actually uh, sort of southeast of Holton, out in the boonies. 
and I didn't have a clue how to get there. So the ceremony was in a barn on a gravel road out there somewhere. So I spoke that into my phone and I set it down on the console and off we went. And it started to tell me where I was to go, what I was supposed to do. Now I do have to say, and I bet you've probably experienced this at some time, have you ever had where your cell phone sort of kind of leads you astray? Yeah. So actually, I had some things that kind of held me up here at the church, so I kind of got kind of a late start anyway. So I'm running a little behind, but we're going. And then it tells me to turn here and turn here and turn here. And I'm like, I, I've got to tell you that I am so glad that I have that phone because I don't have a clue where I am. I'm like, phone, don't fail me now. Because I'm already running late. And you know, have you ever been to a wedding? Or it, It's like, well, Pastor Brent, it's like, uh, you know, at, at, at certain focal points, you are definitely the key person. It's not like they really can get a substitute right then because that young couple has invested, you've invested in them, but they've invested in you. So you know the program, you know the ceremony. And they're all waiting there for the rehearsal. And if you don't show up, boy, it's not like they can kind of get somebody in there real quick to take care of that. So you're kind of mindful of that when you're that person. And so I'm, I'm driving along, and I'm, so I'm out in the middle of the country somewhere, and I know I'm somewhere around Holden, but I really, it's out there somewhere. But anyway, that's not where I want to go. I want to go to this barn that I've never seen on this gravel road that I've never been on. And so finally I get up to the point, and it's, it's so, so it was, a, see, I can still remember because it was sort of traumatic for me. It was 14702 102nd Street. Do you know where that's at? Can you go there right now? Don't use your phone. So I, I, okay. So I get to the gravel road and, you know, Google Maps is so cool because they give you a little picture there. Now, so this is my, this is the picture they gave me for my destination. A gravel road. I look in the picture and it's a gravel road. And it's like, well, thank you. I already knew that. It's a gravel road. So I get to the gravel road, and I do, I'm look. I'm saying, there, there's the gravel road. And it says to me, your destination is on the right. Okay. Well, there, and I knew it was in a barn. So there's a house right there, and beside the house, there's a barn. And it says the destination is on your right. And so I, okay. So the destination is on my right. So I turn right into this house. And I pull around and something tells me that I am not in the right place. <laughs> and so I'm, you know, and I'm already running late and I'm like, where in the world am I at? And I don't think this is it. And so this whole family comes out to greet me, including the dog and all the kids and everything. And they all come out. But I don't see the couple and I don't see anybody else. I'm like, oh boy. So I'm wanting to get back in the car, but they want to talk. <laughs> they want to greet me. They want to know what I'm doing. But the one thing they didn't have for me that I wanted to know is where I needed to go. So I'm like, you know, thank you so much. And, and so here was basically what they said. They said, well, probably just keep going down this gravel road and you'll be okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> so then I'm going to jump back in the car and the late, very nice lady goes, oh, wait. So I'm already, by this time, I'm about 15 minutes late, you know, and I still don't know where I'm going. And the lady goes, oh, wait. My daughter wants to talk to you. And then she was, she was a doll. 
And, you know, and the whole time the dog's right there and he's, I mean, he is barking and he is wagging his tail and I'm like trying to be polite, but I'm like, I got to get going. And, but she was so cute and she had to tell me some little things and she wanted to shake my hand. So I got that done. I got back in the car and as I'm going down the gravel road, it's like, seemed like every, it would just keep saying, your destination is on the right. What destination on the right? Every, there's all these houses along here, and every house is my destination? So finally, I pull up, and I see a bunch of cars parked out here, and I see a bar, and I said, please, Lord. I'm going to turn in here. Please tell me. Please, Lord, this is it, right? This is right. This, yes. All that is to say this. Now, um, if you use Google Maps, raise your hand. What is something that's always on that map whenever you bring it up? Every time. It's the little, the little pin that's right there. The place that tells you where, you're, where your home, where home is. So no matter where you go, when you start out on that map, even though it might tell you that your destination is on the right several times, you always have that little pin right there that shows you exactly where home is. And that is God. No matter where you are, no matter where you're experiencing, and I'm here to tell you today that from the time you were born, so we watched our young people today, right? And don't we enjoy that so much? As a matter of fact, Pastor Brent, too, kind of revealed a little bit of himself a while back with some pictures of himself. And he kind of admitted he needed to grow a beard because, well, not just because Darla told him not to take it off just to try to make himself look a little older. You and I have known change from the day we were born. Now you know today, I know you know as I'm preaching to you today that you know exactly what I'm going to say to you, what I am saying to you, but how easily do you forget? I know I do. That little pin that's always there. Now that pin represents something that is there and it's real and it never changes and it's always there. And whenever I say that I want to go home, it will take me there. And so my God and your God is who he is. And nothing and no one and no circumstance and no feeling that you have or no thing that you go through or no place that you go will ever change that. Before you took your first breath, he was there. He knew you always. I read to you today, we read together Genesis chapter 3. Now, we know that this was... Moses and God. And so Moses is, as we well know, all of us, I believe. And if you don't today, that's okay. Because we're all just continuing to learn. And that's what the church is about. It's not who's the smartest. It's not who's the brightest. It's not who's the most talented it's about you and me and the one who always is. 
and his love that remains consistent for you and I. And so Moses is at the burning bush. And if you remember, 40 years before, he actually was pretty confident in himself. And he, and I want you to know something, I'm really, I, I'm really behaving myself today because I just want to come down and talk to you. But I'm staying up here today. You notice how I keep straying off? Brian said I could go to the right, but I can't go to the left. I got to go to the right. There is not many places in the world today that you can go that the people do not know who Moses is. You don't have to be a Christian to know who Moses is. We today honor who Moses is. We look back at him and we see what a mighty man of God that he was and that he is. Yet I need to tell you today to remember that as you're reading those passages, Moses wasn't really well, he really just didn't start out as a champion. And the first person that would have told you that was him. Because he was so confident in that that he told God, I'm not your man. Get somebody else. Now today, I want to ask you without raising your hand, how many times in your life have you looked at him and said that? Pastor, pray today for our parents. It's a very intimidating thing to be a parent. And as you said, when we go home from the hospital, they don't give you a manual. And sometimes you feel like just, you know, you need to go back and hand them back off because you don't know what to do. There is nothing more humbling than being a parent. Well, there's a lot of things that are humbling, but I've got to tell you that parenthood is up in there as far as that. And that alone, I've always said to po folks, I said, nothing will bring you to the knees, your, your knees, quicker than your own kids. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, should have said, do I have an amen in the house? <laughs> <laughs> because, listen, you're really invested and you really care and you really, at that moment, realize how much you fall short of what it is that God has given you to do. Amen. That is our walk with God, that is the life that we live here. We live in a world that's constantly changing. The, the perimeters change. The foundations change. The language changes. The way people do things changes. It goes on and on and on. And in the middle of that, God says, I want to use you. And you look back and say, I'm not him. I'm not her. I'm not that mother. I'm not that father. I'm not that minister. I'm not that servant. I'm not. And the list goes on and on. And if you're not sure what kind of list to make up, go back and read Moses. He'll help you. <laughs> he had a list. Now, all of that is to say, what did God say? Well, let's look. 
Exodus chapter 3. God said to Moses, I am who I am. Now, when you're facing something or going through something, I'm going to say this without in any way being reverent towards irreverent to our Lord. But there are times when you have looked at him and I have looked at him and said, thank you. But that's really not everything that I want to hear. Thank you, Lord. I worship you that you are the I am. But I have come to you today with this. And I need some direction. I need to know what you're going to do. I need to know what I'm supposed to do. And he doesn't respond. Or so we think. It isn't that he hasn't responded. It's just that he hasn't responded in the way in which we thought he should. Or with the content that we thought that he should now bring forth to us. So can you imagine Moses? He's been in the desert now for 40 years. He's been watching out for sheep for 40 years. Everything about Egypt and all that was 40 years before. And then God appears after 40 years and says to him, I want you to go back, and I want you to deliver my people from the premier superpower of the world of the day. And so when Moses, who is still telling God that he can't do it, God responds to him and says, I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. So in other words, not just to you, Moses, but this is what you're to say to the Israelites who I'm going to call upon to trust in me and to look to me. I am has sent me to you. And so he goes on to remind him, God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. And I say to you today that the Lord Jesus Christ has made the way for you to have this same moment, this same relationship, these same words to apply to you. To apply to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. This is from the new, uh, excuse me, from the Life Application Bible. It says, God reminded Moses of his covenant promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Why would he do that? I am keeps his word. I am is consistent. What I say, I will do. What I promise, I will bring about. And use the name I am to show his unchanging nature. Now, if I was to put this life on a graph... And then I was to apply our Father onto the graph. 
the life that we know here on the graph and all the experiences and things that we go through would be like this. The ups and downs of life. The struggles, the trials, the joys, the happiness, the sadness. And on that graph is God. Right through the middle. Never changing. Ever. When God promised to the great patriarchs hundreds of years earlier, he would fulfill through Moses, his wisdom spans the ages and his promises give meaning and direction to our lives. Jesus said, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. I am the root and the offspring, saying, I am the foundation. I am immovable. And I am the promise unchanging all through the ages I am the descendant of David as I said the bright and morning star always bright never moving never fading never ever changing.
We honor you, Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the triune God, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Jesus said, don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. Today, as I pray a blessing over you by the grace of the Holy Spirit, I speak these words to you from our Lord, which says, I will accomplish who I am and what I am and what I am about will not change. I will fulfill it. I will bring it about. I wonder how many times these words comforted the disciples when Jesus left, even though he said, I'm not really leaving. I'm sending another of the same, the Lord Holy Spirit. How many times those words must have comforted them as they began to know change in their lives as they served God and all that they went through. The writer of Hebrews says to the Hebrew church that was going through change because of their faith in the Lord. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. As we part today, I would like to invite you, if you would like, to come. Pastor Brent and I will pray over you with whatever need that you have. But by the grace of God and under the authority of his word and his love and by his purpose, I send you forth. with his blessing that you already have from the great I am, the one that will love you before you were born and love you to the last day in this life. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, God bless you all.